Big moves in the market today, Jason. You know, we had the CPI report that hit. Late this morning, we were deep in the red, but now bouncing back. What do you make of these market moves? Well, I don't put too much stock in you know one day moves, so given some of the technical factors that are driving things. Uh, and given the pullback we've had recently, you, know, you could get some short carbon in certain days, things of that sort. So. Day to day, I don't kind of you know, put too much stock in, in the moves. It's clear, though, like from the inflation print, the initial reaction was, I think a lot of guests talked about earlier, that it makes 25 more likely, at least, you know, you know incrementally versus what we've come into the inflation print. But I think big picture doesn't really change the, the dynamic from the Fed perspective that, you know, they have justification for cutting. The inflation allows them to cut. The labor market gets weakened enough that to me, it's maybe shifting around the timing of when these cuts will happen and uh, more so than the magnitude in total that, that will actually happen this year. And I think that's ultimately really what matters for the markets overall. Well, and it seems like the narrative in the markets has switched to the so-called bad news is bad news for the markets. But today sort of scrambled that maybe a little bit. So how, in other, in other words, is bad economic news still negative for the stock market, even if it means the Fed isn't going to be cutting as much? Well, it's interesting because ultimately you're kind of talking about the psychology of how investors are interpreting this data. Uh, and when do they feel confident that the Fed is you know, not behind the curve, are they being proactive with, with cuts? Uh, you know, how pessimistic are they actually on on the economy? So certainly sentiment on the economy has gotten, you know, worse in terms of confidence in a soft landing. But if the equity markets are really worried about a recession, you they wouldn't be at these current levels, credit spreads wouldn't be there. So I think the conviction in a soft landing is moderated. But yet, if you were really concerned, I think you'd see more outright selling. To me, I think the mindset of a lot of investors is they want to buy, they want to add exposure, they need economic data to sort of give them catalyst or enough evidence that the Fed is going to be sort of proactive. And so whether it's a better jobs print or a dovish Fed next week, you know, then I think either of those could sort of turn the market. But I think at the moment, I wouldn't too much too much stock in whether it's bad data is bad news or vice versa. I think ultimately just investors want to see something that would let, give them the, the justification for being more confident on the overall look and therefore add risk. Let me ask you, Jason, next week, let's say uh, we do get that tr traditional cut, 25. How do you think the market responds? Is that, is that baked in? I think at this point in time, especially after the CPI data, it was already you know, only about a 25% chance being priced in for 50 next week. It's, it's less now. I think the key will be what does the Fed signal for going forward? Given what the market pricing is, which is around or over 100 basis points for this year, there is a chance for the Fed result to be a little bit hawkish. And by that, I mean, uh, I mean, the dot plot of the projection for rate cuts this year may only be 75. Uh, and if the market's pricing over 100, that could be interpreted as hawkish. A lot of that could kind of though come back to what the Fed, what Powell says in the press conference. If it kind of echoes uh, Chris Waller's comments last week that, you know, if the day weakens, they're prepared to be very aggressive. Basically, they're saying any sign of weakness, we will move to 50. And I think the markets would like that. So a lot of it comes down to the exact nuance and terms that, that I think really Powell says in the press conference, more so than updated dot plots. So there is scope for disappointment, but I think there's also ways in the market can interpret this as like, all right, the Fed essentially has got our back. The Fed put is very active. That's the key thing. Jason, you heard us talking earlier about tech um, helping drag stocks up today. You guys are still positive on technology. Why is that after the sort of rockiness that we've been seeing there? Well, there's a few factors why we like tech as a sector within the S&P 500 overall. One is that you know the earnings numbers are coming through, uh, and we saw that like you know you mentioned Nvidia earlier, you know the results were still impressive, but they perhaps didn't guide as, as you know upwards as much as the market has liked in the past. So the bar is just so high, it's you know there's easy scope for disappointment. Uh, but the earnings, whether it's for Nvidia and others, are coming through, and sort of alluded to you know some of the comments from the CEO today that. It's almost more if they just can't match the supply uh, and the sort of supplier problems, not a demand problem. That's the critical thing, which means I think for next year, we still expect the CapEx spend for AI to actually accelerate. There's upside risk. So you couple that with earnings that are good, this upside risk to spending. And then from our portfolio perspective, you know, these are quality companies. They have really good earnings, very good balance sheets. An environment where there's still some uncertainty about the macro, it's not bad owning these kind of companies that have really strong earnings power, really dominant positions, versus taking either a lot of cyclical risk or getting too defensive in an environment where ultimately we still think it's going to be a soft land in a good, relatively good macro environment over the next six to 12 months. Well, judging by the trade today, you are not the only one who thinks so on technology specifically. Jason, thank you so much. Appreciate it. You're welcome.